Tom Wiscombe, born on April 4th, just like Mary Coulter, in La Jolla, California, is an American architect based in Los Angeles, uh, California. I don't know if I pronounce well, I try to pronounce it in Spanish, La Jolla, La Jolla. Uh, it's also the, the, the place where a great work by Louis Kahn is, is, uh, is, uh, is built, was built, uh, and that is the Salk Institute. Okay, so Tom Wiscombe, he is the, the principal and founder of Tom Wiscombe Architecture, TWA. <laughs> Interesting, to TWA. This used to be a famous um, airline uh, uh, in the United States. And there is a famous terminal, TWA, by Iro Sarina, built in New York City. Consisting primarily of unbuilt projects, Wiscombe works Actually, I don't know very well how to pronounce his name, Wiscomb or Wiscombies. Anyway, Wiscombs, maybe, works. Work is known for its massing, graphic qualities, and inventiveness, all informed by contemporary ecological thought. <laughs> On Wikipedia, you can see it's written citation needed, citation needed. Um, <laughs> I'm not so sure about this ecological thought. I think this is rather, uh, you know, uh, an opportunistic statement. Architects, many times they do this, you know, they play with the forms as they feel like doing, and then they try to justify, uh, you know, legitimize the forms with uh, some kind of ecological references. Uh, you'll understand better when I arrive at uh, a specific drawing later on. His recently released monograph, Objects, Models, Worlds, covers his practice and ideas. He was the chair of the undergraduate program at Southern California Institute of Architecture, SciArc, where he taught for over 15 years. I thought he still teaches, but I don't know. Anyway, this is the man, uh, and he is 52 years old today. Uh, what do we see behind him there? But certainly an ornament. So modern architects uh, not always reject ornament and some of the better ones actually uh, don't do it. They, they, they address ornament, including uh, Adolf Loos who wrote, um, you know, crime, ornament and crime and including Miss Van der Rohe in his famous Barcelona pavilion. Adolf Loos, despite his um, vehement uh, rejection of ornament, uh, he uh, used uh, highly ornamental marble in several of his um, creations. And Miss Van der Rohe has in the uh, Barcelona pavilion two walls, quite large, highly ornamental, using, again, the natural ornaments of marble and they, they can be seen uh, as examples of uh, modern architects not rejecting ornament. Uh, Tom, Tom Wiscom, some drawings, but I will show a lot of drawings because he didn't build too much, but we are going to see also some um, uh, construction sites with buildings that are being, uh, that, that are coming into being by him. Uh, he's, uh, he had an interesting idea to create, uh, you know, sets where one could, uh, could uh, uh, you know, you could purchase a set and you can assemble, like you, see, you can do it with Chartres Cathedral or with other buildings. You can make the building uh, using these parts. You put them together and you create the building that uh, Tom Wiscomb uh, cre created. Uh, an interesting idea. Unfortunately, these sets are rather expensive, but a lot of work went into them, you know. Uh, but it's an interesting idea also to promote himself. And maybe this was the, the main reason. Although, although Tom Wiscomb is he's, uh, uh, very open to uh, playfulness and he advocates, um, you know, uh, a certain amount of uh, a ludic um, attribute in the architectural work. Otherwise, he is very, very rigorous, as you can see, 
and he uses uh, you know digital technology at the highest to uh, to make these things um, you know uh, feasible and possible I'm not an expert in his work. I just want to say, to say happy birthday to him on April 4th by showing some of his works. The Sky House. This is being built. Uh, and uh, if you open his website, the first words you see are down to the earth. But I'm not very sure what he means by down to the earth, unless, unless I consider the viscerality of his architecture. His architecture is visceral. And if the earth is visceral, then yes, then it, it, it has some uh, connection with the phrase down to the earth. Otherwise, his architecture is very, you know, uh, technological, uh, digitally, uh, you know, uh, created and represented. It does belong to our time. <clears throat> uh, it's true. It agitates a little bit. Uh, he has many projects. He worked for many competitions. Here I just show a few works by him. But if you are interested, you just type in his name and uh, you can arrive at, in his website where you can see all the works that he did until now. Again, he's 52 now. He spent many years teaching and he spent many years doing competitions, studies, experimental houses, and so on. Life is tough. It's not very easy to, you know, especially if you have a vision, an innovative vision, it's not easy to, you know, be able to implement. But slowly he is beginning to build. Does he take, ris take risks? Yes, he does all good architects do. Without taking risks, uh, you can create a very creative architecture. It's impossible. You have to create, you have to take risks. Well, for him, maybe it's not so difficult because the whole climate around the, the you know, academic climate and the architectural climate around Sci Arc in Los Angeles is uh, uh, just about that, taking risks. Searching for the unknown, not for the known, but for the unknown. Now look at this. You know, it's it's uh, it's a uh, you know contorted uh, uh, structural system. is uh, is complex. is uh, uh, you know uh, tensioned. is uh, entangled or tangled. But I think. It expresses our time. And yet there is a logic. Yet there is a, there are all these elements that you can put together and then create what he wants to convey through the models and through the drawings. And lately through the buildings themselves. So this is a house that is, 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 is well, it's actually a... Um, um, I don't know how to say a refurbishment... Uh, it's, it's, it was an existing house that he's remodeling. White on white ceramic. So he thinks also about using ceramics. Not bad. And uh, on the left, we see a fragment of a house uh, by uh, one of the textile houses by Frank Lloyd Wright, who created uh, himself. You see here, actually, this is from uh, the Wright uh, house, houses, four different kinds of... Uh, concrete blocks, themselves ornamental, which he employed in the textile houses that he built in California. I'm talking about Frank Lloyd Wright. And they are mentioned actually, as you can see in the text uh, below, reminiscent of the gray Los Angeles textile block houses of Frank Lloyd Wright. So the uniform stack of facade of the previous building is replaced with a patchy envelope of white on white ceramic panels. Panels switch from flat to deep relief and from gloss to matte, creating a mottled future ancient effect. I like this future ancient effect. Both future ancient effect. 
Dark Star, San Jose, California. Uh, this is what he wrote. A collection of massive, mysterious technical objects. I don't know very well why he uses the word object. In my opinion, a building is more than an object. It's never just an object. Would you call, for example, uh, uh, Villa Capra, La Rotonda, of uh, Palladio an object? I wouldn't. Or Chartres Cathedral? I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it an object. Nor would I call an object uh, um, the houses of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, since we just mentioned him. Anyway, creates an enchanting civic plaza at his feet. Each object comes to rest at its own scale and orientation, more like a giant toy than a monument. Strong silhouettes stride, 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 stride tint with twinkling lights invite wonder, piquing curiosity rather than appealing to known symbols. Although the forms are very large, they come to rest lightly. The plaza on which they land is shaped by three sets of shadows generated by the objects themselves and from the lights each contains. In the evenings, the ground is animated by dark sky lighting in the guise of a meadow of multicolored stars as if they had fallen from the forms above. The effect is both intriguing and playful. These are his words. Now let's see what he did. Uh, I don't know, I don't understand very well what the function of this so-called object was to be or is, but these are his uh, representations. As you can see, nothing could be more removed the, uh, from uh, uh, Mary Coulter than Tom Wiscombe's. Walter P. Moore reception desk in Los Angeles. Uh, sorry, there had to be a distance between K and L. Uh, this is a built, it's just a reception desk, but you will see a very sculptural uh, and uh, you know rather unique and provocative uh, reception desk. Um, let's only hope, you know, behind it would sit a secretary or a receptionist who would be uh, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, uh, less provocative, so to speak. Now you look at the room around the reception desk, which was not designed by him, and we see two different worlds. The reception desk is like some kind of like a uh, uh, crazed uh, architectonic animal that, uh, you know, is uh, rebelliously reacting to the rather placid surroundings. Uh, it was built and it was built maybe in a factory or in a studio manufactured through, you know, uh, detailed uh, efforts. This is how his buildings are. This is how his proposals are. Maybe this explains in part why he didn't have too many commissions, although he's beginning to have. Now, the Guggenheim Museum in Helsinki is a pro proposal he made for the competition uh, that took place a number of years ago. And in the jury, there was uh, Ginny Gang and uh, Mark Wigley and a few other people. I made myself a, a scheme, so to speak, for this competition, but I didn't send it to Helsinki because I didn't register, but you are going to see it a little bit later. But let's look at the work of uh, Tom Wiscombe. That uh, he designed this black, to use the words of, uh, I mean, I don't know. Bernard Chumi wrote me once when I showed him uh, some drawings of mine uh, that one of them reminded him of a friendly meteorite. Maybe this museum by uh, Tom Wiscombe is rather. I mean, I don't know. Is it friendly? Is it unfriendly? I don't know. I mean, blackness, although blackness is, uh, is very appealing to, you know, uh, 
many artists and uh, intellectuals, even in the United States, and maybe not only in the United States, here the blackness is not um, apparent because of the conditions of light. This is Helsinki, and uh, you know, in the sunlight, uh, this uh, you know uh, complex uh, uh, building uh, doesn't appear as as black as it appears here. And then we see all kinds of, uh, I mean, he studied very uh, seriously. He tried to justify his uh, uh, scheme, you know, the building posture, uh, withdrawal, vicarious relations, hidden object world. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Do we really need all these uh, explanations and justifications? You know, it, why can't we take in a work and, uh, you know, feel it? If, if, it's, uh, if it's good, uh, it moves us. If it doesn't move us, then maybe it's not good. Architects still feel the need, and uh, maybe because this is the procedure, you have to justify yourself, you have to argument what you did, you know as opposed to painters. They don't have to explain themselves. You just hang the painting on the wall and if people like it, they buy it, even with hundreds of millions of dollars or over 100 millions of dollars, like uh, the flowers of Vincent van Gogh, revealing the nested object. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit tired of this word object because again, I think a building is more than an object and it has to be more than an object. A section through through the building. Again, what could be more removed from Mary Coulter? And it's almost the irony of fate that both Mary Coulter and, and Tom Wiscombe's are born were born on the same day, years apart, but still April fourth. So this is his proposal for the Guggenheim Museum in Helsinki. Of course, digital technology has no mysteries for him. He was very digi digitalized from the very beginning and working himself very knowledgeably, uh, you know, with digital technology. Architecture that makes its own context, it's written there. The funny thing is, as I said, that when you open his website, website, the first words you read are, you know, back to the earth. But but his arc, in a way, it is back to the earth, but to a certain side of the earth, not not the organic, uh, you know, earthy earth, but the. I mean, I know it sounds strange. What do you mean by earthy earth? Well, we don't see here organic materials, we don't see stones, we don't see bricks, we don't see even the earth. We see, you know, playful abstractions digitally represented. And in what, in what way, and it's strange because Zaha Hadid also uh, claimed that she wanted a raw, earthy and vital architecture. But the architecture of Zaha Hadid is not raw and is not earthy. Maybe it's vital, at least sometimes, but not raw and not earthy. In the same way, the architecture of uh, uh, Tom Wiscombe is, is not, is not earthy. So I, I wonder in what way he wants his architecture to be down to the earth. And now I'm going to show you, and I'm not sure I do the right thing. Uh, I. I will show you a few images with a sketch I did for the same competition, uh, the Guggenheim Museum, which I didn't send to Helsinki. I showed it before, I show it again. Maybe I, I have again a desire to start um, myself uh, doing architecture projects as opposed to talking about the works of other architects. Playing with Archicad, with a very old version of Archicad, 
Um, no, no, sorry. Uh, before I show this, I will show you myself a building. Well, if I am to call it a building that that could remind one of what, what he himself did. If you look at this, at this, by Tom Wiscombe. Well, many years ago, I did something in Archicad, which is very similar, which shows me that I have something in common with him, if I am allowed to say so. This is a view of the friendly meteorite, as Bernard Chumi put it, a side view, Another side view, what you see, those black lines actually represent sections through constructive entities, uh, walls, roofs, slabs, and so on. So they are not graphic elements, but sections through uh, constructive elements. Is it a meteorite? A little bit similar to the Guggenheim Museum proposed by uh, Tom Wiscombe? Maybe, a little bit. A little bit, maybe superficial. Anyway, but I also made myself a sketch for a possible Guggenheim Museum, the same competition where he participated. Mm -hmm. I just made myself with my own hand working with a very old Archicad version. Uh, what you are going to see, I didn't send them, I didn't send it to Helsinki, but uh, I did it. I said, since the icebergs are melting, let's build an iceberg. And this was the site in Helsinki. Uh, the proposal by uh, Tom Wiscombe was here in this raw, red, reddish uh, area. This was the site of the competition. And around it, the city of Helsinki, the capital of Finland. And this was the top view of what I sketched, and it's nothing but a sketch. And I worked with the uh, with, uh, uh, roofs, and I intersected them in an aleatory way. And what you see is what you get. And this would, would have been the, the schematic, the sketched, uh, you know, view of the building from the outside. I don't have uh, images from the inside. I'm not so knowledgeable with Archicad. And another view of the same thing. If the icebergs are melting, let's build an iceberg. But the idea, the idea, I mean, the naming came after I did these sketches and not before. Now I return to Tom Wiscombe's uh, Sunset Spectacular. This is a building that is being built. It's almost done. It's this structure that he built here. And it's an interesting uh, structure. The only thing that bothers me is that it is actually the support for uh, giant uh, billboards uh, making publicity for, uh, in this case, a car, lighting powered by electricity. And I'm not sure we need, uh, we need more capitalistic uh, advertisements. I'm not even sure we need more electrical cars. Because the electrical cars, yes, don't use oil, but they use electricity. And electricity is still very much polluting. So I'm not sure this is the way forward. But this is what he built, or is being built now. As for these movies, HBO movies, we know exactly what they were made for. They were made for box office success, meaning money. So it's not about the great art of filmmaking. It's about the great art of mo making more money. This is what HBO is about. And this is what uh, Netflix is about. And uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, uh, creating a building as a billboard for uh, such uh, uh, large, uh, as you can see, very large uh, uh, banners is a way to move towards uh, an architecture that belongs to culture, not to civilization. The first true all-electric sports car. Well, well, well. Do we need more of this? I don't think so. But... I guess, uh, you know, the building has to make money for itself in order to be, to be built, and uh, these banners probably help. 
After all, it's a Porsche, is it not? I'm sure they paid a lot in order to insert in that portion of the building that huge banner. But the building has qualities, you know, and it's just that it saddens me that it's just the background is essentially to other capitalistic enterprises. The more catchy, the better. The more showy, the better. But the building is interesting with all its contortions. It probably costs a lot. Everything is designed, everything is detailed, everything is, uh, you know, uh, required uh, effort and talent and knowledge. Tom Wiscombe or Wiscombe's. I, I, I have to, I have to, I have to learn how to pronounce his name to my shame, since I lived for many years in the United States. And what do we see here in this uh, urban uh, landscape? Essentially, we see banners, no? Giant. I mean, giant. And for what, actually? You know, it's all that money and all that ink and all that uh, support material promoting what? promoting selling and buying and uh, consuming. This is what is promoting. The sky is still blue in this picture, but for how long? Because these banners pollute through the, their very essence, for their very raison d'etre. Are the trees happy? I'm not sure. We still have the trees. They give us the oxygen by the banners do not give us the oxygen. The banners do not give us the, the ozone. Quite, a, quite the opposite. They take away from the ozone and from the, the oxygen. Now, uh, inevitably, the chalet is dark. He's building now this dark chalet. Now, why is it dark? Maybe a certain pessimism exists in himself, in the architect. Now, this is, uh, you know, uh, uh, dark uh, uh, properly and, uh, you know, uh, not just metaphorically, but maybe there is also a metaphorical darkness. Do we see snow there? Yes, we see snow there. But for how long will we still have snow? The building is dark. It's the dark chalet. Uh, 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 you know, a sophisticated... Uh, um, complex steel structure still pollutes. The earth is silent. We excavate, we inscavate. Maybe the pr proper word is in inscavate, not excavate. Well, it's both inscavate and excavate. Man, the measure of all things, at the center of the universe, is building a dark chalet designed by this architect. People working hard. Do you see how many cars are behind it? You know, this came to the site just in order to help, uh, you know, uh, build uh, build this the building, the dark chalet, the dark chalet, which at least in this picture doesn't show opening windows. It only shows giant glass surfaces that do not open, meaning air conditioning. Does the air conditioning pollute? Of course it does. So, you know, where, was the, where is that ecological architecture, actually? The architecture of uh, Mary Coulter was ecological, yes. But the so-called dark chalet is not. I am sorry, with all due respect, and I make a, you know, a homage, a presentation, on his birthday, and I don't know if anyone else in this world is doing a presentation with the works of Tom Wiscombe on his birthday, and I do it. But, but this doesn't, uh, um, you know, uh, restrict me to not saying uh, that I have some reservations. I mean, I see here, you know, this analysis, natural ventilation. What natural ventilation? Those windows don't open. You know, cold air intake, cold air intake, cold air intake. It's all about intaking. The high summer sun blocked by roof eaves. I, 
I'm not so convinced. As I am not convinced about the, all the, the ecological uh, uh, qualities that Sir Norman Foster claims his later buildings have, I am not convinced. I'm not convinced that through higher and higher and higher and higher technology, we solve the, the problems the Earth has. I don't know what this represents, to be honest with you. I like the I like this uh, representation, uh, this uh, drawing. I don't know what it is. Uh, I like it, but I don't know what it is. Maybe it refers to all those fragments that uh, belong to the extent to the skin of the building. Um, anyway, but the building is black. It's not color like this. I wish it was colored just like this, the chameleonic chalet instead of the dark chalet. The central fireplace designed for this building was designed by the firm as a Swiss army knife with a host of functions. That's what uh, Tom Wiscombe or his office wrote. A host of functions. Well, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, hearth, because it's a hearth, existed in traditional um, you know, uh, societies, in old villages, even in Romania, since um, old times. And uh, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, contemporary architect um, is uh, thinking of renewing this function of the fireplace. Custom open wood burning fireplace becomes an essential element of Eden, Utah chalet, the dark chalet. And here is a interior perspective uh, of the, uh, the drawing of the of the project with that uh, fireplace. Well, except that in traditional societies, the fireplace place was not just a romantic feature to look at, but it was uh, also something to you know to cook food on it, and uh, you know it indeed had a function which now is missing. I don't know what the, the, the other functions of the Swiss army, uh, you know, uh, knife uh, are in, in, by the way of this uh, fireplace. I, 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 I see only two possible functions, you know, to maybe enjoy looking at it and the sitting on, on those steps and talking with someone and maybe warming yourself up a little bit. But I'm sure the warming of the of the whole building uh, is not uh, uh, provoked by by this fireplace. Anyway, the fireplace is just like that uh, desk that he designed. It's a sculptural piece with its own expressivity, uh, but uh, I'm not sure if it has indeed so many functions that it serves. I, I don't think uh, the cooking takes place here. I doubt it. Otherwise, the building is uh, ambitious uh, as, again, a steel structure that is uh, consuming a lot of steel and thus polluting a lot. But, you know, as long as we have nice diagrams about, uh, you know, uh, how, uh, uh, you know, ecological the building is, it's fine. I'm a little bit sarcastic, of course. I like his architecture, but uh, when I look, when I see this, um, you know, uh, large surface of glass, and I don't think any of these moves or opens, I, I see immediately the need for air conditioning. And we know what air conditioning means. Pollution, that's what it means. Still, still, and still again, the viscerality of a, of an architect who has a vision about architecture, and I respect his vision. But when I look at this picture and I see all those cars coming and going, bringing in materials, bringing in workers, bringing in uh, construction elements, bringing in structure, bringing in all kinds of things in order to say what? That we are building another building which throws a shadow on the tortured earth. That's what we that's what I'm seeing. Happy birthday, Tom Wiscombe.